What's going on? What's going on? So, you know, we got some good fights coming on tonight. Um, Devin Haney uh, take, taking on Jojo Diaz. Looking forward to it um, just because I think, you know, Jojo Diaz, I remember the fight when he had with um, Gary Russell Jr. Um, Gary Russell Jr., he was able to handle his business as it pertained to Jojo. But still, Jojo, he was just, he was really tough. He was really rugged. And as a kind of, he's a kind of fighter where if, you know, if Devin was to make certain mistakes and this guy catches him, he could end up being in a whole world of hurt real easily. You know, but I do expect Devin to win. I think he's going to be able to outbox him. I just think he's more of a, he's a superior talent. But it's one of those fights that could end up being a whole lot more interesting than people think. So I'm looking forward to this fight. But anyway, but besides that, though, um, Eddie Hearn was talking, um, obviously, with they're promoting the fight. And um, one of the things that he said was that this fight was, you know, you know, like, oh, it's a whole lot bigger than the fight between um, Javante Tate Davis and Cruz. I'm like, oh, the people are talking more about this. This is the fight that people are talking about. And that was going to be, you know, definitely a bigger event. And it, I just think I always shake my head when Eddie Hearn does this, especially when it comes when he's comparing two fights that are when you're talking about the popularity of it. When you're talking about the interest in it, is there's a massive, drastic difference. You know, you know that you've only sold like 4,000 plus tickets for your event. You know that Javante Davis is going to have 15, 16,000 people at his event. You understand that Javante Tank, uh, Javante Tank Davis's tickets are substantially more expensive than the fight, than the tickets for the Devin Haney fight. You know that for a fact. You know the history of the zone when it comes to when it comes to viewership as it pertains to the zone you know that not only that you know you're not going to put out those numbers regardless but even though this guy is fighting a cruise he's going to do it what he said like oh what's his fight going to do a hundred thousand pay-per-views even though javon the tank davis has been consistently doing over two hundred thousand pay-per-views but let's say he only did a hundred thousand pay-per-views that's a hundred thousand pay-per-views at eighty dollars a pop that's a lot of money. That's millions upon millions upon millions of dollars that the Devin Haney fight's not going to generate whatsoever. So when it comes to additional income from pay, you know from the pay per view, your fight's not going to do that. This fight's going to do that you know in a substantial amount of you know substantial amount. That's number one. There's going to be no comparison when it comes to the gate whatsoever. This you know the the tank fight's going to do who knows ten plus times nine ten times the gate that Devin does, if not even more. So it's not even close. So it's like, why even, why even do that? You know, why even try to pit those two against each other? You know, LRB went online and um, basically he was talking about how this fight, you know, you know, he got nothing but love and respect for Devin, but it's like, you know, that Devin fight sold around 4,000 tickets. You know, that Javante Tank Davis basically did that in pre-sale. It's like, you know, Tank is blockbuster. You know, trying to minimize what he is, is asinine. You know, it's absolutely asinine. These people, um, he basically also went there and was talking about, because, you know, I was surprised, surprisingly, the reporters are actually trying to check him on it. You know, they're su surprising the reporters like, well, you know, 100,000, well, he's, you know, he's done over 200,000. He did it against Santa Cruz. Like, well, that was Santa Cruz. You know, okay, also, you know, everybody knows who Santa Cruz is. No one knows who, you know, uh, knows who uh, this guy Cruz is. He's like, well, he also did 200,000 plus versus uh, um, versus um, Barrios. He's like, well, Barrios was a champion, you know, even though Barrios had a secondary belt. And this is the same secondary belt that this man will trash on, saying that, oh, that's not a real title. That's not a real belt. But all of a sudden now, Barrios is a champion. You sound moronic. You know, because he did 200,000 too. It's just, you end up putting your fighter in a bad light. Forget putting you in a bad light. You end up putting your fighter in a bad light because it goes from a situation where it's just, hey, he's a great fighter. He has a good bout where everybody is interested in to now you're putting people to a space where they're going to compare, where now there's a comparison, you know? And it's somebody you don't want to be compared to when it comes to the dollar amount and when it comes to the numbers, something no one was even talking about, no one even cared about, no one was talking about how, oh, 
you know, this fight will make so much more money and this and that. No, it's like, okay, they're both fighting good fighters. They're not fighting each other, but, you know, Cruz is a good fighter because he is. He's a top 10, 135 pounder who's been in a long win streak. He's putting people to sleep. And JoJo's also a good fighter. He, I mean, he lost to Gary Russell, but he was able to become champion versus Farmer. He's moved up. He has two good wins. This is a good bout. See, this is a good bout. It's going to be interesting for both. And especially since what we saw last week, everybody knows both these fighters better be on their P's and Q's. Be on your P's and Q's because if you're not, bad things can happen as we just saw. You know, so that's all it was. But again, he tries, I guess, you know, bring attention, I guess, to the bouts of his fighters, but doing it in a bad way, you know, doing it in a negative way. And it's just, it's just, it's dumb. It's absolutely dumb. But at the end of the day, you know, we'll see what happens between in, in both fights. We'll see what Cruz does, um, you know, with Tank. We'll see what Jojo Diaz can do um, when it comes to Devin Haney. See if they can, you know, show any flaws, take advantage of any kind of weaknesses that might be there, or if you know they're completely outmatched. But either way, I'm look, I'm looking forward to both of these. Um, as far as Tank is concerned, me the only thing with him is that this is a short guy. This is the first time that he's fighting somebody that's shorter than him. You know, so that's going to be different. It's like a complete different element. He's used to being substantially shorter than the people that he's fighting against, smaller than people that he's fighting against, and being able to just slip, slip, and find his spots. Now you, it's everything is completely different from where you're placing your shots. You know how you, um, how you, you know you're gonna um, land your power. All this stuff is just it's different. So because of that, I'm kind of just interested because it's always these are the type of fights that these guys will fight top tier dudes and beat them and beat them easy, you know, but then you'll find this fighter where no one's expecting anything. And all of a sudden you're in a dog fight where, and I've seen fighters get, you know, get put into these type of situations. I've seen even Floyd Mayweather get put in these type of situations, but because he was, he was prepared because he trained because he was ready, he was able to come through with it. Like in that first Madonna fight, you know, he was able to still come through it and become victorious because he was physically and mentally ready for that to happen. And if they're not ready for it to happen, we've seen what happens. We've seen what happened with the with the with the with Teofimo Lopez. We've seen what happened with Anthony Joshua, Andy Ruiz. You know, we've seen what happened with Lennox Lewis and um and Rachma. That boy got put. All the way to sleep. Night, night, curled up on the floor. Game's over for that night. Then we saw what happened in the rematch. You know, so these things can happen if you're not ready for them. Um, but he needs to stop. This whole, the way he tries to promote, I guess this might work in the UK. Um, but it doesn't work here. And all it's doing is hurting this kid. And I understand they're paying him a good amount of money. I guess that's why he stays in this system. And he stays with the, with this promoter, but long term, it's not going to work for him, you know. And I said, I said, where he's at right now, as far as popularity and everything as a fighter, he's pretty much reached his peak. People are not going to want to hear that, but he pretty much has. He's not going to grow too much more than he is right now. The only reason he's even at the level that he is right now, probably as far as popularity, is probably because of his father and his father's relentless as far as trying to promote this kid and, and keep him in in, in in um in YouTube. And, and um and other social media uh, platforms, because you see what happens. Anybody heard from Tevin Farmer? We seen what's happened with Demetrius Andres. This is usually what happens to you when it comes when you're a fighter and you're being promoted by Eddie Hearn in the United States. He's not good at it. He's horrific in it. And because of him not being promoted the way that he should be, there's a good chance that he's probably going to lose out on this fight against Cambosas as well. It's a good chance, you know, if 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 Tank Davis really actually wants that fight and DeBella's interested in doing that, that fight's going to happen. And Devin's going to lo lose out. And Devin is somebody that was head up, heads and shoulders above everybody else when it came to popularity and notoriety, you know. But instead of him jumping from here and jumping up to here and doing a long period of uh, a time frame, that's not what happened. He went from here and came up to about right there. And you've seen somebody like a Javante Tank Davis who was lower than that. It was down down here, and he skyrocketed all the way up to over here. And I think they both had the ability to be in the same level. And the only difference is 
the people that they chose to tether themselves to. You know, Devin Haney, he wanted that upfront money. You know, he wanted that upfront money. He didn't. He wasn't looking long term. His his they weren't looking long term because Al Heyman, they're not going to give you that upfront money like that. But as you go up, you're going to get paid. You're going to get paid. You're going to get paid. All this back end money other people don't usually get. You're going to get those funds. You're going to get that money. You know, and over in long term, you're going to serve these people that were taking this, 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 you know, this heavy, you know, the upfront money. You're going to surpass them in earnings and everything. You know, that's why somebody like a, like a, like a, like a Earl Spence, see what happened with him. You know, that's, that's, that's the route that he took. And you see where he's at right now. Javante Tank Davis, you see where he's at right now. You know, but then you look at somebody like Shakur. Where is he at right now? And he's not going to progress to these high levels. He got that upfront money, but long term, he's losing out. And right now, Devin Haney, same thing, he's losing out. You're with Mayweather Promotion, with PBC, that gate's substantially higher. Your gates are a whole lot higher than they are right now. And you're going to get a whole lot more better promotion than you're getting right now. And your career would have progressed to a whole different level than it is right now. You know but. We'll see what happens, you know? You know, time always reveals all, as I say. But for now, like, subscribe, share, I'm out.